Hello everyone. So let's start our next chapter on the topic of the fundamentals of probability. In this chapter, we'll be covering some of the fundamental concepts of probability as we are starting our quantitative analysis book. We'll first cover the basic concepts that surrounds about around the probability. So in this chapter, we'll be talking about event and event space. We'll be discussing very critical and very important concepts of independent events and mutually exclusive events. Then we'll be talking about the differences that they have. Then we will discuss the probability of an event and what is a discrete probability function. Then we'll be covering different aspects of conditional probability. Now let's start our discussion on the event and event space. So basically, first let's discuss what is a sample space. So the sample space of a random experiment is the collection of all possible outcomes. It is denoted by omega. By all possible outcomes, we are referring to the outcomes that we can have. For example, if we are talking about flipping a coin, a coin can have two options only. Either it will be a head or it will be a tail. So while flipping one coin, all possible scenarios that we have are head and tail. Now these scenarios will be referred as sample space. If we have two coins, the possibility may change. If we have two coins, we will have two heads and two tails. So when we'll flip coin for the first time, we can have two heads. We can have one head or one tail. We can have two tails and we can have one tail and one head. So for two coins, the sample space would be this, which includes four possible outcomes. Here the number of out outcomes were only two. So referring to that sample space is the total number of possible outcomes and, or all sort of possibilities that we can have while performing an event, which refers to our next definition of event. So what is an event? Event are actually a subset of sample space. It is noted by Omega. So for example, here in this particular case for coin, we know that sample space is four, but we may be interested in one event that what is the probability that there are two heads when we are flipping two coins. So this is one event, total events are four, then the probability would be one divided by four. So an event is something that we are interested in, that, that, that we want to calculate probability for. It may contain only one event or it may contain more than one event. For example, we may be interested in knowing what is the probability of having the same outcome in both coin flips. So basically we are interested in head head and tail tail. In this particular case, the result would be two divided by four. The total number of outcomes are four. They are the, the events that we are interested in are two. So we will be calculating the probability uh, by dividing the number of events that we are interested in and total number of outcomes. So the probability would be around 50%. So an event is something that we are, that, that is a subset of sample space and the event that we are interested in to, to, to find out the probability of. Then the third thing is event space. Now event space is an extension of event. Event space is something which consists of all combination of outcomes to which probabilities can be assigned. So basically the, the head head here is an event space. The head tail here is another event space. But an event space can be head, head and tail, tail. So basically any, anything that we can assign a probability will be referred as an event space. It is denoted by Latin F. Now let's discuss the concept of independent events and mutually exclusive events. So independent events are events 
where whose occurrence is not dependent on any other event so for example we have an event a and we have an event b if a does not impact b in any way so it doesn't matter if a happens or not it means that event b is actually not dependent on event a let's take an example there are two stock stock a and stock b if we see historical data we see that for example for a particular day the stock a had a profit of 10% but stock b had a loss of 5% on another day the stock a did not have any profit or loss it was 0% but stock b had a profit of 2% on another day both book losses on another day a was in loss and b was in profit so basically the, the data is showing that they are not moving together they are not actually impacting each other so so a stock a whatever is happening here in stock a is not impacting or is is not influencing the outcome of stock b in other words the outcome or return of the stock b is not dependent on what's happening in the stock a so these two stocks or these two variables are actually independent of each other when the impact or or the occurrence of one event is not impacting the occurrence of another event when we have two events event a and b and if they are independent if we want to calculate the the probability of them happening together we will just multiply their probabilities so in this particular case for example if these are independent event and if you want to know the probability of them making profit together and if the pr probability of a is 5% and probability of b is 10% of of making a profit on a particular day then the their combined probability or their intersection would be 10% into 5% on the other hand mutually exclusive events are the event which cannot occur together which cannot occur at the same time so basically they are the event which cannot be simultaneously happen for example in this particular case if we talk about a stock a a stock a can either book a profit or a loss on a particular day closing okay so when a, when a day closes we can see that either the stock a is in profit or it can be in a loss so this profit event and the loss event they cannot occur simultaneously either we can have a profit on a particular stock or we can have a loss so basically these two events are actually mutually exclusive they cannot happen at the same time another example is that if we are if we are rolling a dice we all know that dice has six possible outcomes so it will be from 1 to 6 we want to see an event when x is equal to odd number and we also want to see that what is the probability of x coming out to be 4 so we know that if there is an odd number which are primarily 1 3 and 5 in this particular case if we are interested in in knowing the probability of an odd number 4 cannot come because it's an even number so basically the the, the probability of an odd number coming out on a dice and an even and and a four number is actually zero so basically they are actually mutually exclusive events when two events are mutually exclusive their probability would be given by probability of a union b which we usually refer as like this so this is a and this is b so we just add them up so we will add the probability of a and probability of b and we'll be able to calculate their combined or probability or their union of probabilities
Now let's discuss some of the axioms of probability. So basically, probability measures the likelihood of an event. So basically, what's what's the probability? What is the chance of one event happening? Okay. So for example, we are interested in knowing what is the probability of raining in New York today. So either it can be a hundred percent probability that there is a hundred percent chance that it will rain today. Or there is a 1% probability, it means that there is a very minor chance of raining today. But this probability will always remain between 0 to 100%. So either there will be absolutely no chance of an event happening or there will be absolute certainty of an event happening. So the range of a probability is actually 0 to 100%. But since it's, it's a probability, since it's something that we we are predicting about, we will not see these numbers usually. So even if we know that there, there's no rain today, you will see that there will still be 10 to 20 percent chances of rain in the weather forecast because there can, there can, there can always be a possibility of having rain without having any indicator or, or there can be sudden changes in the weather. So. So basically, when we are seeing that there is a 20% probability of rain, we will see that, you know, there are very minimum chances of rain. On the other hand, even if we are sure that, that, that there will be a rain today, we will not write 100%. We will mention, let's say, 70%. So that also shows that there is a high probability of raining today. Now, the first axiom that we are going to discuss is that the probability of an event or its complement must be 1. So the maximum probability that can be assigned to an event must be 1. So by a complement AC, basically this is an event space. This is an event space. And we are interested in A. So AC is something that is around A. So everything in the sample space minus A would be referred as A complement. Or, or the thing that is remainder of, of event A. So basically we can say that AC is equal to 1 minus A. Or in that sense, probability of AC is equal to 1 minus probability of A. If we just change this, we can say that, you know, probability of A plus AC is equal to 1. So probability of A plus probability of a complement is equal to 1. This is one of the axioms. The second axiom is that total probability of two events is the probability of each event minus the probability of event defined by the intersection. So when we are talking about two events which are not mutually exclusive, we are not talking about mutually exclusive event for which intersection would be 0, uh, if they can happen together there will be some sort of intersection as we reference this. So basically for the example that we discussed earlier stock A and stock B, if we assume that they are not independent, there can be probability of profit for both of them and there will be, so this is a probability of stock A making profit and stock B making profit and they, then there will be probably there will be a chance that they will both make profit on a single day. So basically when we will calculate the probability of their intersection we will just subtract this portion because this is an additional portion that, that we are getting in. So we will just subtract this additional portion the, the intersection between the two events. So the probability of A union B of probability of A or B happening together would be probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So probability of A union B usually read as a probability of A or, A or B and for the intersection we usually read it as probability of A and B. Now let's talk about the difference between independent events and conditionally independent events. So we discussed the independent events earlier where two events A and B are not depending on each other, they are 
independent events. But we can have scenario where we can have three events A, B and C and the occurrence of A and B is actually depending on the occurrence of C. So basically we are talking about probability of A given C or probability of A depending on C and probability of B given C. So in, in actual cases probability of A given C and probability of B given C may be independent or dependent on each other irrespective of whether the standalone probabilities are independent or not. So basically we are saying that A and B can be dependent or independent and when another factor is introduced it may change their relationship. So there can be a scenario where two independent events can be converted into dependent event if particular event C is introduced. And if that's the case, we can calculate the probability through multiplying their probability. So probability of A, B on this section B given C is equal to probability of A given C, probability of B given C. So uh, let's take an example. So for example, there's a, there's a, there are two people, Alex, who lives in one part of town and travel through car to office. And there is a person hails who lives on another part, like the opposite part of city. And he takes a train to office. Now we want to know what is the probability of Alex and Hales reaching office late. So on the face of it, we can see that they, they, they don't live together. They are living on the opposite side of the city. Their commute way is different. So one is coming from car and, and the other person is taking a train. So basically their probabilities seem to be independent. Okay. So, so the, uh, the chances of Alex getting late on a particular day do not depend on Hales getting late on their particular day. So basically it, the, these two events are actually independent, but we can have an event C, for example, strikes in the city, for example, thunderstorm in the city, for example, oil shortage in the city. So there can be scenarios which can impact both Alex and Hale. So if there is a case of a strike in the city, it may impact both Alex and Hale because it, it will impact the car as well and it can impact the train as well. We can talk about the probabilities that the probability of car impacted by a strike is more than the impact of train get impacted by, by the strike, but it, it will both have some sort of impact. So, so basically we are talking about the probability uh, that, that this particular third event which is an event C that can impact event, event A and event B. So if there is an external event which is event C, it makes these two independent event into a dependent one. So now if there is a case of a strike, if there is a case of thunderstorm, if there is a case of oil shortage, their probability of reaching office lace will now be dependent on each other. So, so their probability will now move along with each other and it will not be independent anymore.